Hey, I'm Keyshan with directcarpet.com. Today we're going to show you how to put in your herringbone stair runner with your left or right turning landing. So uh, stick around. We're going to show you how to do the underpad. We're going to go over everything that you ever wanted to know. Now here are some of the tools that we're going to be using today. We've got a hammer. We've got a glue gun if we need it. We've got a kicker. We've got an electric staple gun. We've got some staples. We've got a carpet tucker, a good pair of scissors, a pencil, and a tape measure. This is the staircase that we are doing today. We got two stairs going up, and then we got a right turn landing, and then these stairs over here are thinner than the stairs at the bottom. So at the bottom, we've got a 30 inch for the top two, then we've got a matching 30 inch stair landing, but then when it turns, we're gonna turn it into 24 inch. We're going 24 inch up those three stairs. Actually, we're only gonna go up the two, and then we're gonna use that top stair there as the riser piece. So we'll show you how to cut that and finish off your staircase nice. We're gonna show you how to cut this beauty here. Now this is gonna be tricky, but we're gonna measure that and do that. Now we've got our under pad. When you place an order with directcarb.com for a stair runner, we are going to take care of your under pad for you. So your under pad will be included free and it'll be cut to size basically for you. So because this is a 30 inch, we've got two 30 inch pieces right there. We've got our right turn landing and then we've got our two pieces for the top. Now this top stair is 24 inches. We've got our pad cut down to 22 because pad is always one inch shorter on each side then your stair carpet so that you can have a place to staple down in between on each side. So whenever we're doing our under pad, it's very good to figure out where we're going to be centered. So we're gonna center between these two posts right here, one and two, right? <clears throat> Let's check our under pad. It says 28 inches. We know our runner's 30, so we want to center this between these guys and between the spindles up. Now, being centered is everything. If you center your pad first, then your carpet is going to be centered, okay, with a little tweaking. So, putting the under pad on is very important. So, here we go. All right, we know we got 28 or three inches on that side and two and seven eighths there. Ah, two and seven eighths there. So, listen, we don't want to wrap our pad, we want to put it along the uh, front here. Today I'm gonna to show you a little different method than I normally use. If you don't have a lot of tools, you're gonna to have to have your electric stable gun. It's a must, this is a Roberts. The link is in the description of the video if you wanna pick it up at Amazon. It's pretty much the cheapest, best electric gun for this kind of thing that you can get. And you can use it for tons of other stuff around the house. So listen, we've got our pad lined up and instead of using a pad stapler, you could just use this. All along the front nose. And the reason why we put so many staples is so when you pull the carpet up, it doesn't curl. Okay, and that's all you have to do there. Now, you can take a tape measure in the back end. I usually take my wrist and I put my, the back of my hand here, not my wrist, but the back of my hand here. And then what I'll do is I want about a, an inch to half inch gap. So what I do is sharp blade, take my X-Acto knife, and I go all the way down, leaving a nice straight line. Now you can pre-cut these before you put it on so that you know that you're perfect if you measure that. Listen, say that you needed nine and a half inches, you can pre-cut these pieces of under pad at nine and a half inch. Now let's move up to our second stair. Now I'm gonna show you another method that you can, you can use. Some people don't wanna put that many staples in their stairs, so we got another way for you. So let's center this. We know that it was, you can mark them all along, all the way up your stairs. If you pre-mark everything, then you don't have to check everything, right, with a, with a pencil. But I'm gonna check it. Three and a half, that looks good. So what you can do is instead of stapling this, you can really take some tuck tape and you could tape this all along. Now we use this all the time. We don't hear that many crinkles. So it seems to be like a very good tape. We use it in basements all the time to connect the pad together rather than gluing 
the pad to the concrete. You can see that in some of my other videos. But make sure before you stick it, you're centered. I said three and a half, yep. And we're on the front, don't go over the nose, right? Look at that. There we go, push back a little bit. Okay, now we're just gonna stick it down, all the way over down, all the way along. And make sure you push it nice down really hard so that you don't hear that crinkling. That tape's pretty serious, so uh, you should be okay. Now listen, I'm always stapling my stairs, because I don't worry about the staples, but that's for you that worry about the staples. Now listen, I'm just running that one inch gap to a quarter inch gap at the back. The tighter, the better, and keep it even. Because when you cut your pad even, that is gonna display how your carpet actually folds down and becomes even. Okay, so now we've got that. Now listen, I didn't even put any staples in. That is just taped nice and loose. When we push this way, it's gonna be awesome. Let's get into lining up our under pad for our landing. Where is our under pad gonna be on the back end here, right? Where is that gap? Well, that gap is gonna be wherever that gap is at the top, meaning where's our 24 gonna be? We're putting a 24 inch carpet runner here. If we wanna center our pad for our landing, then we need to know where our gap, or how many inches from side to side we're gonna be at. So let's check that out now. So let's just do that, right? <clears throat> Before we set up our landing. So here we go. Let's center it off this post and this stringer, okay? So I got three and a half inches there. I think it was about a three, three inch gap. Let's check it. So three inches there, right? And three, let's say three and three quarter and four. Let's go, let's move a little bit more. Four inches and four inches. So that's where we want to be is we want to be four inches on that side and four inches on this side. This one I'm just going to staple but then put a staple every quarter inch so it doesn't roll. And if you want, you can put tape over that too. Always stay along your one wall, never measure off your railing wall because usually, like once you center it, which we did, right from there to there, always measure for your carpet and everything all along your stringer wall. It's just usually straighter, right? So let's set up, we know it was four inches. Let's pull our pad to four. Done. Let's grab our knife with a really good blade and let's cut that half inch to an inch back. Nice and easy, nice and straight. Okay. And let's do the same with this one. All right. Now we've got our 30 inch stairs. Actually, well, those are 28, which are gonna take a 30 inch piece of carpet. That's 30, that's 28 at the front and 22 there. We've got our 22 set up, so guess what? Now we know that we wanna be four inches back over there. So let's measure that. We wanna be four inches off of there. If we're four inches on the top, guess what? We wanna be four inches down here. Okay, now we also wanna make sure that we're centered here too. Right, so what did we see off the spindle earlier? Two and three quarters. Let's pull that back. To two and three quarters. Two and three quarters. Four inches at the back, which mat matches the top. So when we go to set up our carpet, things are gonna be perfect. So now that I've got that kind of set up, you know what? I wanna tack it in just to hold it in place so I can finalize the things that I'm trying to do. Because getting our underpad really is everything because then you can line your carpet up super easy. I'm just gonna tack a couple in. Okay, I'm gonna take a really good knife. I'm just gonna cut the front of my pad all the way down. OK. 
Okay. Take a few staples there. Okay, but you know what? I'll show you that, uh, that tape method again. Make sure it's pushed down really, really solid so that you don't hear any of that crinkling after the carpet goes on. Like I said, we use that tape in the basements all the time to, to attach the pad. So here we go. We've got our pad set up on our first two stairs. We've got our landing set up in place and we've got our two top pieces of under pad there. We're not gonna do that top stair. We're gonna pretend that's an upper hall. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna finish off underneath here, which is gonna look absolutely amazing. Let's grab the carpet and get ready for this herringbone stair runner install. Right. Whenever you order a stair runner, from directcarpet.com, we're going to ask you to send us pictures of your staircase so that we can tailor them accordingly to whatever you need, how much pad, how and what size, et cetera, et cetera. So here's a perfect example of what I've done for this video we're doing. There's a couple herringbone runners going out this week that left, left hand turn and right hand turns. So I wanted to do a herringbone runner for these people that are actually doing it. So here is what you're gonna get inside the box. Now I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna de-box here, but let's say, have a look. We've got two stairs here. So we pre-measured that and here's the piece. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna tag on it. Number one, bottom start here with arrows down. Reason being is we've got this beautiful sewn edge on the bottom that we want you to put against your hardwood floor. All right, we've already tailored this to 30 inches wide from here to here. And we've already tailored it long enough to go from the bottom up to the top and then we're gonna cut off the excess to get ready for the landing. So when you order from directcarbon.com, we're going to take care of this for you to bring it down. I'll make it as simple as possible, okay? And then it just makes it easier, especially if it's your first time. Right, so I'm just kind of getting the carpet in place before I uh, start. Okay, now listen, if you've seen my other videos, index fingers, right? That's about an inch for me. So what you do is you take your carpet and you take your index finger and you center them at your index fingers. This one's a little bit more than that. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna center it, touching the pad underneath, I want you to measure as well, but that is a great way to center because now you can center your carpet all the way up. Okay, very easy, quick method. So let's get uh, into position and get our stable gun ready. Okay, our tape measure, our stable gun, we've got it locked and loaded. We're full of staples, at least there's a half a clip in there. Let's close that up. It's plugged in, ready to go. We've got our tucker over here, our carpet tucker. We've got our kicker. Okay, we've got more staples on the uh, laying around the side, just because, okay? And we've got our tape measure. So let's make sure that we're centered. Now, remember these posts where we were, what, two and three quarters, and then on the other posts we were two and three quarters. Feeling with my fingers underneath, making sure that she's nice and straight under there. Gonna check with my tape measure and see where we're at. Uh, we were two and three quarters, sorry, we should be an inch and three quarters. There's an inch and three quarters there, and on the other side, we are an inch and three quarters, so we are good. All right, so look at, we're lined up at the bottom, made sure everything's in place, we're gonna wiggle our stable gun and get one right in the corner like that. And we're gonna stick every three to five inches between the lines, Nice, clean, no stable marks, because you're gonna wiggle that stable gun in there a little bit so that you can eliminate those marks. Now we're going under the nose here, is we're gonna pre-bend, okay? So that we can really, really get underneath there. So make sure you push down, pre-bend, get that thing, look at I bend that right in there. And this Anderson Tough Tech stuff is serious, serious nylon carpet. So you gotta work it. Okay. We know we're even, we know we're straight. We're gonna get under that nose. We're gonna put a staple every inch. 
pushing up on the 45. Sometimes at the end, I like to put two. I run my finger along there just to see. Now you guys are gonna get a better view of this as we get a little higher. This is the bottom stair, but I wanted to put you guys down low so you could see. We wanna take our kicker. This is the thing that we're gonna use and put pressure on. It's got teeth underneath it like that. You can rent all this stuff at Home Depot or any big box store or even United, one of your rental places in your city. You can buy these things on Amazon if you want and just resell them on Marketplace or whatever. The links are in the description down below. So all I'm gonna do is because I know that I'm my first stair, I'm pretty much centered. I'm gonna take my kicker and I'm gonna put some pressure on it. You can see I'm just using my hip and putting pressure on it. Okay, pressure, pressure, pressure. I'm gonna grab my staple gun, putting pressure on that with my hip. Okay, one, two, three. That's gonna hold that. I'm gonna do the same thing on the left side. Okay, lots of pressure. The more pressure, the tighter it is, the better your stairs are gonna look. One, two, three. And you can see I'm putting my staples between the binding and the carpet so that it doesn't show those indentations. Now, if you can get away with three staples, get away with three staples because that's gonna form naturally over time anyways. Now, let's see how tight this is. Sounds pretty good to me. Now we're gonna take our stair tool and we're gonna score the 45 between the riser and the tread. Four to five to six times. Okay, now we're gonna take our kicker in the middle. Tension, right, like we did before. Push with our hand. Push. Nice. Now we're gonna take our tucker or our carpet tool. Link is in the description if you guys need one. They're not that expensive on Amazon. We take our hammer, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go all the way down on the 45. And we're gonna bang those staples in. All the way along, feel with our hand. Feels good, looks good, nice and tight. We don't need it. Might need one more staple over here. I'll show you guys. Have a look here, okay? You see it's a little loose. Sometimes if it's loose, I'd like to just pull one more in, okay? Looks good. All right, next, let's get ready. We're moving on up. First stair is done. Everything else is gonna be the same. All we're gonna do is course correct because no staircase is ever straight. So we're gonna course correct as we go. So if we were already even here, it means we're probably pretty even here. So we're gonna preform our carpet by just squeezing it, getting it into place, pushing it under the nose. It just makes it easier so the staples don't pop out. Okay, we'll course correct in a minute. Let's make sure we look straight here. It looks pretty good here. Okay, don't just run in there blind. Have a look, eyeball it first. Up on the 45 every inch. Up on the 45 every inch. Run your hand down there. No staples, feels good. Let's move on. Okay. We're gonna do the landing next. So I don't want you guys installing up to the landing with this much in. So what you're gonna do is take a really good knife. Don't cut through, be very careful. You only have one. I'm just gonna get rid of this excess because I really don't want to try to cut any more or try to stretch any more than one inch because there's a lot of pressure here and it wants to push out and we want it nice and tight, right? So let's get that in there. We're gonna check our measurements. Now we were three and a half at the top and two and a half to the spindle because it's an inch difference. So it looks like we're good. Guys, we're gonna put, take our kicker. We're gonna put pressure on the knee. Let's see if I can give you a side view of that. Not the knee, but you can really do anything. I just wanna put a lot of pressure on it. So let's do that. We're pretty straight. Eyeball it, have a look. Get your tape measure. Look, I've got no hand. I've, I'm all free because I've got pressure on the knee. I take my tape measure, pull it out, hold it with my finger. Check there, two and a half inches. Looks nice and straight, right? Let's have a look. Look at that, nice and straight, okay? So, oh, we're gonna go. Now you guys just double check, double check, double check. Now we're gonna put a lot of pressure here, okay? A lot of pressure on the knee. You guys can see that. Okay, and now we're gonna pop in three staples or four staples, whatever you think you need, okay? And we're gonna do the same on the other side. All right, I might angle it out just to tighten it. See that, look at, look at that move. Move that out, one, two, Three, rub those staple marks out. Move the kicker out of the way for a minute. I'm gonna take my steer tool and I'm gonna score that 45 degree 
in there. Because we're gonna cut this now. We're gonna get ready for the landing. Okay, and what I will do is watch where I pop my staples on this. I like to tighten it up before I cut it, right? But not so much on the 45. I like to put it on the down position on the 45. Remember, we gotta get a knife in there and cut that. If you hit those staples, it's not gonna be that much fun. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my hammer and my tucker. And I'm gonna groove that in all the way down. Now, I'm gonna cut it. Now for this one, I'm gonna change my blade and put a brand new blade in. No messing around. You want a pointy blade for this. And I'm gonna go from the left to the middle and then the right. You never wanna, you wanna come left to right or right to left, but you never wanna just go through because you'll rip the binding and then you'll have to use your glue gun. You don't wanna rip the binding. Okay, you guys got a great view there. Watch, I'm gonna get the tip of my knife in there on that angle, not so much the 45. I'm gonna angle up because I don't wanna hit those staples. And I'm gonna use my hands as a guide, my fingers as a guide. Now you might hit the staples. I'm gonna try not to. Let's have a look at that. Nice and clean. Okay, we're gonna go to the halfway mark, pull that out, and now I have a double sided blade, so I'm using a brand new blade on this side as well. Now look at that, nice and clean. Blow all that fluff out of there. Tuck it down with your tucker. And you guys saw I didn't hit a I didn't hit a staple when I cut it. It's nice and tight. I used a fantastic blade and the first two stairs are done. And now we're going to get set up to do our right turn landing. Now, if you have a left turn landing, it'll be just the same. We need to set it up the way that we did the under pad. If you remember, we lined it up. We lined those two guys up first at the top before we did that. So guess what? We want to find out where the carpet is going to sit there. And then we want to make a mark down here with a pencil to figure out how long from that pencil mark over the edge and down right to this point, what is the measurement from there to there? Because then we're gonna cut it and we only get one shot to do this right. So, so you wanna measure, 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 and measure again, okay? You only have one. You don't wanna call me back and order another landing. Um, so let's do that now. So the best way that we can do that is to figure out where our carpet is gonna sit at the top. Now you guys were with me when we did the measurements earlier. So finding out where our tops are gonna sit is really gonna be the most important thing. Okay, so we can figure that out. Now, remember we split this here. What was that measurement? About four inches. Now, we had done that on both sides, there and there, right? We have four and we have four. So we're only gonna take this one side because we're doing this part for the landing. So what we wanna do is we know we're about four inches there. It's actually three inches, three and seven eighths. So then what we want to do is we're not going to mark three and seven eighths. Remember, our carpet's going to come one inch past. So if we're in three and seven eighths, we're going to be two and seven eighths off this stringer. So you can see this stringer here. We're going to measure that. We're going to make a mark at two and seven eighths with a pencil because it'll come off. Okay, so we got our mark at two and seven eighths. And now, because you guys can see, that this goes in an inch and then we got to measure off this baseboard. So from the baseboard to that pencil mark is four inches exactly. So guess what we're going to do? Because that was an inch that we're going to measure over this side from the baseboard and we're hoping that our house is straight. We're going to measure four inches and we're going to mark it. Okay, and I even go, let's go outside of the under pad to make it easier. Only by a half inch, because remember the carpet will cover this. Let's mark it at four. Can you guys see that pencil mark right there? Boom. So what we're gonna do, that's our mark. What we're gonna do is we're gonna measure from that pencil mark all the way over the edge, 
underneath the nose and right down to the bottom inside. Not the top of the car, but the bottom inside. In case you cut short, you're gonna have a little quarter inch to work with. Now remember, that mark is right there. We're gonna measure all the way along, under the nose, right, and down to here. Have someone help you. I'm gonna get my tape measure. I'm gonna put the lock system on, right? I'm gonna get it into position. I'm gonna lock it there. I'm gonna put it on that pencil mark. Okay, and I got it. And if you even want to make a, a four inch um, little template or use a piece of pad, a piece of wood, four inch that you can push against, even better, because that'll give you perfection. Okay, you can see I'm on the mark. I've got my tape measure locked in all the way along. I'm gonna hold my tape measure in position like this. I'm gonna hold it on the nose while I'm watching the numbers, right? I'm gonna hold that tight. I'm gonna wrap that right under there. I'm gonna measure all the way down, and it looks like I have ooh, about 39 and three quarters. I'm gonna back it off and have a look and see if I'm still on my pencil mark, which I am. From my pencil mark all the way down on the outside of the pad, I am 39 and three quarters. But you know what I'm gonna cut my carpet at? 40, because I was not on top of the pad. When you're on top of this under pad, it's gonna be a little bit taller. So let's check that. Let's see if I can give you guys a good view of that. 39 and three quarters. Let's see if I'm right. I'll stay on the outside here and I will go from the mark over the pad, right? I'm actually 40 and a quarter. So let's do that one more time. Let's check that on our mark, around 39 and three quarters. Now on top of the pod, just gonna go over here, make sure I'm on my line, which I am. I'm gonna hold my tape measure in position, nice and tight so she doesn't move. Wrap it around that nose, 40 and an eighth with the under pad. So that's a really good little trick is to get your first measurement and then to double check it over your pad. Because if you go measure that and pre-cut that before you put the pad on there, you're going to be short. And I've heard of people being short by doing that before. So we're going to cut our landing at 40 and a quarter. And if it's a little long, we will course correct, trim it down, but I'd rather have a little bit extra than be short. So 40 and a quarter it is, and we're going to show you how to do that right now. Here's our landing. All of our landings come pre-made with the direction lined up because that direction is going to line up with that direction there. Now when herringbone turns, it's not going to line up, but we'll show you how to get that kind of uh, worked out. So when you order a landing from us, look just as the stairs, on the back side, we're going to show you where it goes. This is number two. The first part was number one. This is number two. Bottom start here. What was our measurement that we wanted? 40 and a quarter. Let's get our pencil and our tape measure. We're gonna measure from the finished end all the way down to 40 and a quarter. We're gonna mark that with our pencil. We're gonna go over to the corresponding side. We're gonna mark that 40 and a quarter. All right, then we're gonna get a straight edge I'm going to mark it with my pencil, from pencil line to pencil line at 40 and a quarter. This is the money shot. All right. Let's hope, let's hope that I measured everything right and we're on track. When I cut my carpet, I like to cut up and into my line with a good pair of shears or a very sharp pair of scissors. You can use your knife as long as you're using a nice sharp blade. Now it's a little awkward for me to try to make sure that you guys can see what I'm doing. I usually do it in a little bit of a different position, but now listen, we're coming to our end here, right? And instead of cutting through that way, I want you to flip it over and I want you to cut up into it. Okay, so that this 
comes down on a corner. And you're gonna see why we do that right now. Now listen, let's see if we're lined up. Let's see if I cut it short, oh boy. All right, so you're just gonna finagle it into place, push it down, let's see where we're at. See if we made a right measurement or not. Right, look at that, we're lining it up there. Right, that looks pretty good. Pattern's lined up. Now let's check our other side. Okay. Oh. Okay, let's check our other side. Looks pretty good there. Pattern's lined up. Now, how do we do on our pencil mark over here? I did cut it a little longer, right? Our pencil mark is right there. And we're about a half inch over, okay? And you can see that we're gonna have a little gap up the stairs there if we leave that there and a big gap there. So, but one thing you gotta know is that we're still gonna staple under the nose here. So why don't we, before we do any staple, let's pull it back. Let's do our preforming. And you wanna preform this one really, really good. Take your time. You only got one landing. Okay, we're gonna get that in the groove. We're gonna make sure we're lined up. Push that back into place and see approximately where we are. Now you can use a weight on there, such as your kicker, right? Let's see, that's where we're gonna be, right? We're looking pretty good, right? Use our, use our stable gun as a weight, hold it in position. Now we know that that's where she's gonna be stapled. So now let's have a look over here. Where's our pencil mark? That's what we really want to know. Where is our pencil mark? Oh, look at that. There's our pencil mark. Oh, look at that. We're almost lined right up. Good thing we didn't uh, cut any more, right? So let's have a look. We've got that gap up the stairs over there, that gap there. We are a little bit, just a little bit too far there to there. Let's go check our measurements over there. Let's have a look, make sure that we're Underneath the nose, no staircase is ever straight. And I know that this staircase is not that straight because the wall's not that straight. So we're a little over four there. We know we need to be at four. And we're at like three and a quarter. We're at three and a quarter. We're a little angled, right? That's okay though. Now, what are we here? We're three inches there and we are two and three quarter inches there. So we're probably gonna have to take a quarter inch off because we've got enough to go under the nose. So you know what, guys, that's what we're gonna do. And this is how I want you to do it. I want you to take your time on this. Let's take our landing. Let's mark a quarter inch. Because remember, we added a quarter, right? So let's take a quarter inch. I'm gonna eyeball it, you guys measure it. I'm gonna take a quarter inch. I'm gonna run my pencil. Now the good thing is I'm gonna cut up into it and I'm gonna cut right on the pencil line this time. Cause now there's no messing around. If we're short, we're short. And I think we'll be okay. Cause we're taking off a little bit at a time and that's how I want you to do it. Right, it's called professional, right? Get to the end there, flip it over, round up in. Okay, let's give that a shot. No, I think we're gonna be in real good shape here. Let's get it in position. Let's line it up. Let's pull it in, pull it down. All right, we line it up. We took a quarter inch off. We're gonna pull back. We're gonna wrap that under the nose. That looks pretty good. We're gonna put a weight on top. And now we're gonna go back and have a look at our pencil mark. There's our pencil mark. We're a little shy, but trust me, when we use the kicker this way, we will get right on that pencil mark. It's a good place to be right now. How are we doing there on our gap? Better and better. So we're gonna twist this a little bit, right? Gap, gap, looking real good. Okay, I think we're ready to go here. So I know that was a long-winded version of that, but you know what? A lot of people have asked me for a longer explanation, and this is it. So listen, we already know that we're lined up on our pattern. Let's get this down in with our tucker. Now you can always use a bead of glue in there if you feel the need to. Hit it down with the tucker, let's get it in, let's lock that in. One staple. 
Now, let's go all the way down to the other end. Push that down. Get the fluff out of there. If your binding is fluffing up a little bit, get a glue gun in there and put some glue in there. Okay? Manipulate this in, get it down, lock it in. Done. Okay, take your tucker, groove it all the way in, smash it down a little bit so it evens it up. Wiggle in between the lines. Okay, we're locked in. So we're in a lot of trouble if we're uh, if we're uh, off. Let's pull this back. We already preformed. Let's preform and get under the nose. Okay, on a 45. Okay, feel with our finger. We're good. Now let's see where we're at. Let's bring this over here. See where our pencil mark is. It's still there, so we've got to come up a quarter inch, which is going to be no problem. Once we put a kicker on there, look at that. It's moving with just me pulling my hand. I'm just pulling my hand and it's moving. Okay, we've got to make sure that our measurement from here to here is the same as the measurement from there to there. Let's have a look at that right now because this is where we're going to course correct in case our house is not straight or our walls are not straight. Okay, let's get a kicker on this. Kick it up to the line. Wow, we can even go past that, right guys? Okay, we're right on. Let's check our measurement here. We are three and seven eighths there, and we are one sixteenth past. So what we wanna do is we wanna twist this this way a little bit, right? Right, because we're gonna twist this way. We get three and seven eighths there, and almost three and seven eighths there. So we'll do one more little, one more little kick to the right. Let's check our measurement on the one end. Uh, three and seven eighths, and four. So that's okay. We're taking our time here. We're gonna kick that and then we're gonna put pressure on that. We're gonna check it there. We're gonna check it there. Looks good. I'm gonna check it there, looks good. All right, so the first one I'm gonna do is I'm ready to lock it in. I'm gonna grab my stable gun. I'm gonna get my kicker close to the edge. I'm gonna tap it and that's how it feels nice and, nice and snug between the binding and the carpet, keeping your knee on the kicker, lock it in. Okay, make sure that you did your measurements. I'm gonna do the same thing here. Knee, knee, lock, lock, and then lock that corner. And then one, maybe an inch past. That locks that whole corner in. If any of your flaps are, are sticking out, fold them under, we glue them for you. But uh, they can come out in transport. If you see any of these hairs, you can take your knife or a pair of scissors and just cut it off. Normal stuff, it's carpet, it's fluff. All right, so we had, Three and seven eighths. I'm gonna tighten it, tighten it up here. Basically around three and seven eighths. Just tighten it back. And now I'm just gonna lock it in all the way along, every inch or so. Push that down. It's gonna form anyways after time with the staples. Now I'm gonna do the same along here because we've already locked that in. So let's lock this in all the way down between the binding and the carpet. Push the carpet out of the way because you don't want to see indentations. Here we go, a few more. Now you can hammer that down if they if you see indentations that that bothers you, right? We always just if we see too much, we just bang it down. Okay, landing is tight. Now we're gonna finish up. Okay, now we've already locked our one side in. We've locked our other side in. Now we've got a lock in front of our stairs. So we're gonna show you how to do that now. So we're already tight here. I don't have to do too much. I'm just going to, we're already kind of leveled out as much as we're going to. I'm just gonna go around. I want you to put a few staples here. Remember guys, we glue this on the angle there. So pop a couple 
in there to hold it. If you see any fraying, snip it off with a pair of scissors. We usually do that for you so that you don't have to deal with it. But remember, this area is a sensitive area. We are making this a left or right hand turn runner. So now we're gonna go, instead of cutting this off, we are gonna run this up underneath this nose. That's how we kind of blend in a pattern that doesn't wanna be blended in. The reason why the next part of the stairs don't go with this is carpet has a direction and it always needs to flow down. So we quarter turn it. So this section flows down, this section will flow down. But if you were to bring your carpet around to the corner, and line it up here, you're gonna get straight lines here and then angle lines here. If you come up underneath the nose and wrap it, not as noticeable. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna score our carpet, get our staple gun on the angle, lots of staples, take our hammer and our tucker, get all the way down there, and now we gotta cut underneath. Now use a good blade. You can either follow the contour underneath. As long as you go nice and slow, right? And then you can trim it up after. You can fold it under like this and cut along. Okay, or you can take your gun This is obviously before you cut it. You could do it like this. Don't staple up into the groove, but once you're there, you can score underneath. Remember, you only got one shot. Cut underneath. Cut from the other side. You guys probably got a better view of that than I did. Let me have a look under there and see how we did. Not bad. Not bad. Let's get that out of there. All right, let's clean out that. Make sure that if any of that is torn, cut it off with a pair of scissors, glue it in with a glue gun. Okay, section. Now, ready for the last section. If you ordered carpet from directcarpet.com, this is gonna be your third section. And this section says, number three, upper flight, start here under nose. We're gonna show you, we just cut under the nose there. So let's cut under the nose. Now we're gonna cut these straight for you so that you can basically just do it. This should be ready to go when you get it out of the box. Now, we're gonna do what we did before. Let's cut some of this fluff off here. If it comes with the fluff, it's because it's not a finished edge. We don't want a finished edge under there. Okay, we don't want you to see that. We're gonna preform this. We're gonna preform this all the way along really, really well. The hardest part is stapling underneath these noses if there's a lot of pressure. So we're gonna fold that like that. We're gonna let that come around. Now remember, we were 30 inches on the bottom, we're 24 here, and we've matched our landing for 24. A lot of people will order a 28 inch runner on the bottom and a 26 on the top. So we will make these landings accordingly. So let's line this up. We're gonna line it up here first. Okay, let's have a look. Get right under there, bend down, get under there. Fold that up inside. Flip that little tab. See the little tab? If that tab's ripped, put some glue on it, fold it back, and then wrap that around. Okay? Line it up perfect. Get your staple gun. Get your nose under there. Get your staple gun. And lock that in. Okay? That's locked in. And what we're going to do is we're going to lock this in all the way along. Feel under there with your fingers. Take the grooves of your fingers. Feel under there and make sure this is pushed in nice and straight. You're gonna see this, the higher the landing is, you're gonna see this. This is a low landing, so you don't see it. You're gonna make sure that this is in. Feel with your hand. Get your gun. Now you're definitely gonna need every inch under here, okay, all the way along. Now you can go down five inches, lock it in. Okay, and then you can even go down to the end, flip that tab that comes with it underneath. Make sure your end is there. Lock that in. Feel all the way along. Guess what? That feels good. You push up into the groove. Carpet feels tough because carpet should always look like it was one piece. Get your head under there. Get your hand under there. Feel. Wow, that feels good. Now we'll look later with the camera. Now, 
we're ready to move on to our stair. I'm just gonna leave you guys in that position. That's the best position for you guys to watch. Then we're gonna take our kicker, same way we did the bottoms. We're straight. Or we're, we're gonna check if we're straight. I'm gonna grab our tape measure. Now at the front, we are two and three quarters. Guess what? That means we need to be two and three quarters at the back. So let's put some tension on. Right, we got tension. We're gonna check two and three quarters at the front, not two and three quarters at the back. So we're gonna angle, right? We are straight, we're gonna angle our kicker out. Push, so we angle it back at the back. We're gonna check at the front, two and three quarters. And guess what? We're two and three quarters at the back. We're gonna lock that in. Two, three. Okay, you guys are here at the front, so I'll leave you guys here at the front. Have a look. All right, I'm gonna stretch it into the corner, make sure it's nice and tight. One, two, and three. Very nice, very nice. Now, let's take our tucker, let's groove that. Now, you guys have already done the bottoms. This is gonna be easy. You can fast forward to, the, uh, to see the top. You guys are gonna to wanna to stick around to see how to finish the staircase off. We're gonna get one more steer here. Let's push in tight on the 45. Every three to five inches all the way along. We're gonna take our tucker and our hammer. And we're gonna groove all the way along. Wow, that looks nice. What are we gonna do here? We're gonna pull back. We're gonna pre-groove, right? We're gonna pop a staple every inch or two under the nose depends on your carpet the herringbone pretty tough stuff want to get quite a few staples in there now you can see all that extra okay sometimes you're going to be extra at the top and what you're going to want to do is you want to cut that off now remember we did that at the bottom too because we're not this we're pretending this is the upper hall here not another stair and we're going to do our finish under here so we want to we're already done all of our stairs we want to take this bulk off okay leave two inches up do not cut through too much and remember to cut left to right right to left so you don't cut the binding now when we send you a carpet runner we send you the top piece finished that's going to be your top riser that goes in here and we're going to measure for that in a second but let's finish our stairs first okay okay we're going to get some tension on it we're going to check on the left hand side with our tape measure against our stringer uh, two and three quarters Two and three quarters sounds pretty good let's do it tighten it up lock it in two three same with the other side one two three now we're going to score that we're on the last stages here of the stair runner install We're gonna take our staple gun. We're not gonna angle on the 45, we're gonna push down. All the way along. Hammer tucker. Sharp blade, left to right on the 45 or a little bit up so you don't hit those staples. Now if you hit the staples, it's not the end of the world. Just change your blade and cut through. So we did that pretty good. You guys saw that. Blow out your fluff. We're on the last stages here. I know it's been a long video. Trust me, I'm the one filming it. I know these things. Now, the same way we did our uh, measuring for our landing is we're gonna measure for our riser. Now this is gonna be the part that finishes off your staircase and makes you look like a rock star, okay? This needs to look nice. Now, you know that the piece that we gave you that comes with the package is gonna have that top on it that gets under here. You're not just gonna have a loose piece that's fraying. I'm gonna take our tape measure, we're gonna measure from here to there and from here to there because no stairs over straight. Right underneath the nose, we're gonna bend that in. That says six and a quarter. And that says a little bit more than six and a quarter, okay? We'll probably be okay at six and a quarter. Here's the extra piece that came with your package. It's gonna have your top riser sewn into it. See this nice finished edge? That's what's gonna go underneath that. Your hall or your landing, whatever you're finishing to. Now what do we say? Six and a quarter? 
And I said a little bit more than six and a quarter. I'm going to go six and a quarter, but I will cut big when I do it. So six and a quarter. Remember, I'm going to kick out on the angle so that it fits the binding nice. And that's what we'll get our extra anyways. Six and a quarter. I'm going to take a straight edge. All right, we're going to mark that. Remember, this is important. This is the finish that you're going to see of your beautiful work when you're walking up the stairs. All right, now we're going to take a really good pair of scissors. We're going to cut up and in. And then you know what? I'm going to cut on the other side of that line because six and a quarter was on the outside to where the carpet is. So I already know this is a probably need a trim. But, like I said, I'd rather trim it then be short because we only send you one of these two. All right. Now, let's go back up. All right. Let's get our riser in here. Let's line it up. Then we're a little tight. Oh, she fits in there pretty good. She's a little tight. You can see that. Let's see how she fits it down the way. She's a little tight. You see this, guys? You can force it in there, but we can probably just take our scissors and we can just... Take an eighth of an inch off all the way down. And if you don't feel comfortable with scissors, straight edge it so you can make sure that you're nice and straight. And now instead of kicking out there, we'll flip it around, kick in there. Now listen, if you see any of that fraying there, put a little glue on there. Okay, usually I do. If I'm putting in a professional job, I will. I will, if I'm putting in a professional job, I will glue these, okay? Because you see that little hair from the binding? You can cut that off, but it's better if you, uh, it's better if you glue that because it's going to fray over time. Anywhere you're finishing, like an edge, like from here to here, from here to here or on the landing, you should put a little dab of glue there on that side, a little dab of glue on that side. Trust me on that one. All right, let's line this up. Look at that, we fit nice under there. Let's see if we fit over here because it was a little bit difference in height. All right, we look pretty good there. Let's fold that corner in. Now let's smooth that in. Let's get that down. Very nice. Blow that fluff out of there. Okay, I think we're good. I think we're ready to lock into position. Let's get our staple gun. Wiggle it. Top corner, wiggle. Top corner, don't staple into the binding. If you're not, if you can't see that on video, staple into the between the binding and the carpet, okay? Now this one's gonna take a few in the middle, because you can see it's a little. I'm gonna push that gap down, split the binding or split the pile. So the staple goes behind those things and doesn't show indentation. And then one in the bottom corner, where the binding is, the other on the bottom corner, and a few on the lines. Very nice. All right, I think that's it. Let's wrap this up. All right, guys, we are all done. Let's have a look at this. Now, if anyone's wondering what this carpet is called, this is Anderson Tough Tex Luminary. You can get it pre-made into a stair runner at directcarpet.com. It is gray with white stripes. Let's check that out. Looks nice there. We're all lined up. If you guys have any questions for me, feel free to email me at support at directcarpet.com or leave a, a note on the channel. Look at the landing. The landing looks just dynamite. Now listen guys, this is a little bit of a tricky installation. I suggest you watch the video again and pick up anything you might have missed and maybe uh, anything I might have missed, feel free to uh, let me know. Yeah, it looks really good. And I know that this wall is not straight with this staircase. I know that trying, I've done this on this staircase a few times, because we're at the Direct Carpet uh, Studios, is trying to get that line straight up there is a little difficult, so you have to tweak it. Now your house is gonna be the same these 90 degrees, right, where you're going from yin to yang, sometimes they're just not straight. Listen, guys, thanks for watching. Like I said, any questions, 
feel free to email me at support at directcarbon.com. If you're looking for this particular stair runner, this is Anderson Tough Text Luminary. You can get it at directcarbon.com. Feel free to uh, leave a note in the chat. Usually I will check the chat or one of, uh, one of the girls will check the chat and, uh, and feed it back to me. If you have any questions, um, like I said, this is Keith Shannon from directcarbon.com. Thanks for watching.